I've been scammed. I scammed on eBay and I'm a little discouraged by eBay's current response. I'm going to hop on the phone with an associate in this video and I want to hear your thoughts to both the conversation, eBay's response, my response. So I got scammed on eBay, which is honestly nothing new. If you've been an online reseller, you've probably been scammed. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors and flavors. Scams are nothing new. They will always affect all of us in some way at one point or another. I released a video, it's about a 25 minute video this morning where I actually had a phone call with an eBay associate and it was the whole phone call and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted you guys to hear it. But I took that video down because I got a comment from another reseller that said I should probably check with eBay policy to see if I'm even allowed to put that phone call online. So what I did was I called eBay just to ask if that is against their policy to post a, I said that I make YouTube videos and I wanted to know if it was against eBay policy to post uh, uh, phone calls with associates on YouTube. And they actually said it's not against policy as long as you ask that individual associate if it's okay that they that you record the call. And that is unfortunately something that I forgot to do. It was a dumb, dumb mistake. So uh, I wanted to be safe. I didn't want to risk my eBay account for uh, a YouTube video, uh, uh, obviously. But I wanted to make a follow-up video because that video actually was really, really informative. Listening to uh, the situation and listening to the associate talk about this particular scam. And basically what happened, it was a two-phone call situation where I called in because uh, someone purchased a, a, a home security camera from me. It was only like 35 bucks, so it's not. it wasn't a huge amount of money. They said it didn't work. They, they opened a return. I accepted the return. I actually have free returns. And when they sent it back, they sent me back just this package with a little piece of cardboard inside. And it was an obvious scam. So I called the eBay associate and I was instructed to uh, send pictures to eBay to provide them proof of the, the package that was delivered to me to show them that that was indeed not what was returned to me. And the unique thing also was that this person had zero feedback. They The address on file um, didn't match their, their name on file, didn't, an address didn't actually uh, match up with some of their other information. And the eBay associate, the first one that I talked with, actually admitted that, uh, and, and from all she could tell, that it was a fraudulent account. So she just told me, she gave me a few instructions, which I followed to a T, and then she said, you don't have to do anything else. Leave the case open. And then I sat down to make a video about this scam last night. And when I did, I wanted to just see the details of the case. So I knew what I was talking about in this video. And what happened when I when I logged in is I, I found out that eBay actually closed that case during the day and they refunded the buyer, the sca aka the scammer, in full. So obviously I had a big problem with that because this was such an obvious obvious scam and I followed in eBay's instructions to a T. So I, I, I made a, uh, a second phone call with eBay and the woman was extremely helpful and she actually explained to me what happened was the first associate, what they do on eBay's end, when they get uh, this kind of situation where, where uh, us as sellers call in with any kind of scam or anything that we want to report a buyer on, they're supposed to escalate the situation uh, and that's how it's taken care of. And the second associate actually told me the first associate did not escalate the situation and therefore in their system since the tracking information of this particular package showed up as delivered to my door uh, it automatically assumed that everything was fine and it refunded the buyer as no human took uh, took a look uh, personally at the case on ebay's end so it just ran through the processes uh, you know, electronically without any human involvement. So unfortunately, that meant I was out of money. So I had a great phone call, a really good phone call. Uh, I had to take that video down because it was really informative just to hear some some of them try to figure out and uh, try to figure out even how to rectify because once it kind of went through, she wasn't sure if she could do anything. Ultimately, what happened is uh, they couldn't fix it. So I lost the money. And the scary part was that this particular eBay user was not kicked off eBay and that that person is still active and out there and shopping. And I also wanted to add that it was only about 35 bucks. So obviously it's not going to put me out of business, but it became more about the principle that eBay was not supporting me as a seller. And when this was, even the associates that I spoke with agreed that this was just a situation that was misfortunate. And because of the, the lack of follow-up on certain procedures or policies that eBay has in shape it, it, or on their end, that it kind of fell through, through the cracks. I'm a big advocate of 
of things uh, that are in my control, not worrying about things that aren't in my control. This is certainly one thing that is now out of my control. And there's nothing I'm not going to spend more time or energy other than talking about it on YouTube to share the information. Uh, I also don't want to just focus on the, the uh, anything super negative on my particular channel. I just wanted to be aware and I, I loved the information that was shared in this video, but I had to take it down just to protect my eBay account. But thanks for all of you who did if you're watching this for a second time, thanks for all of you who, who had some really good feedback for myself. Let's get into some thrift stores. I found some awesome treasures out in the wilds. I went to a rummage sale at a church, and then I found uh, some really awesome stuff at one of my favorite thrift stores in all of the United States of America. So let's hop into those, and I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again out in the wilds. And we are off to ye old rummage sale in the basement of a church. Basements of churches are my favorite places to be because the sales are, the prices are so sinfully low. Look how many people are out here. Uh, I think word's getting out that church sales are the places to be on Saturday mornings. I find this vintage stuffings uh, plush. It's, it's got a little hole in the tummy, as we all do, but uh, he's not supposed to have one. I couldn't find exact comps for this thing. I found these Draculas. Not the greatest comps. I'm not sure if this will sell for like $10 to $15. I had to pick it up because they're only 50 cents, but uh, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe that was a bad buy. Too early to tell. Then I don't love selling mugs. I have been finding more mugs out in the wilds, uh, but I did find this Cookie Monster is extremely popular. So I did pick this up because it was only a quarter and I did find a comp online that it's only, or that it's selling for about 25 bucks. So, uh, that's a great return, great margin. So I ended up did, uh, picking up that mug. Then in these cookbooks, I find this non cookbook, uh, the Yule Lads, and I was excited to see their faces because it sells for about 32 bucks used on Amazon and I'm only paying, I think it was a dollar for books there. And then I find these fantastic knives. This, this top one here, Wusthof, German company. And again, uh, bad pronunciation, but it sells for 90 bucks on eBay. So that's fantastic. Then I find this Chicago color. It was a little beat up and the blade ended up actually being pretty used. So I left this one behind. It only sold for about 10 to 15 bucks brand new anyway. So I left that one behind. I did check out this other knife to make sure it does look new. So I wanted to make sure it was new and, and Indeed, it was very fancy. So a lot of fancy money is going to hit my pocket. And then I find a dollar for these shirts. I find this vintage pro player. Obviously, a lot of you guys know vintage sportswear is, is always, especially because it's football season, find this New York Giants. It has some stains, as you can see. But uh, so it's not going to get a premium price by any means. But for a dollar, I did find it sold for about $35 plus with shipping. So I'm going to try and get maybe 20 bucks out of this sucker here. It's double XL, great size. And I find this new tags, Callaway golf uh, golf jacket. And because it's the spring or because it's it's colder weather, I'm going to maximize. I probably could get a good price with Christmas coming up. So I wouldn't fault anybody for obviously selling this now. It can sell for about 30 to 35 bucks. However, I'm personally going to wait until the spring when golf season rolls back around. Obviously it's golf season somewhere. There's always warm states, Florida, California, it's probably parts of Texas are always warm and people are always golfing year round. However, I'm going to hold on to this until the spring and just put it in with my goblin layer and see what I can get in the spring. And we're off to Second Life, my favorite thrift store this side of Uranus. We can see that there's a 50% off clothing sale, but we're not here to stare at signs all day. We're going inside to look at this Halloween pants and look at these eyeballs on these pants. I can truly see myself in these pants. This channel is full of amazing jokes, just like that. Now we're going in to find board games because that's what we do on this channel. And I see all these people, including a dog, are shopping for games. And when did dogs become resellers? Because that's the case. I may have to retire early. I find this Stranger Things, Ego, uh, never seen this before. So it was indeed pretty strange. Um, sells collectible, 20 bucks though, which that was a that was a happy to see. And I think it only sells for, or purchase it for about five bucks. So this is a good score. Um, I'm doubling my money on that sucker. Then I find this cool castles game. And this is a good scenario, 15 bucks where I've, I wanted to sell this on Amazon because as you can see, it sells for, uh, 63 bucks brand new. I could probably get like 50 used on, on Amazon. However, I am restricted, so I can't. And if you go over to eBay, it actually sells for about 35 bucks, so way less, about half the price. And at 15 bucks, I just can't profit, so I left that behind. Then I find this Harry Potter Seen It second edition, and I used to sell this a lot. Uh, 10 bucks is way too much from the thrift store, but you can see the price is way down. It's only selling for about 19 on Amazon and I'm restricted. So obviously this is a no go. Then I uh, looking at some tool, tool section and I find Bob Ross uh, board game up on top hiding and look at Bob Ross. Uh, 
Beautiful man, beautiful hair. Look at that smile. He's a national treasure, as they say. Collectible, 15 bucks. And uh, I did a little more investigating. I can sell this for close to 17 so I'm spending 4 bucks on this game and uh, selling at that $17 price point. I'm, I'm making about 5 or 6 bucks. Then I like to look through these little bags of toys. You never know what you're going to find. And uh, in this particular bag, it was just a bunch of junk after all. But as you can see, in this next bag, I find something pretty interesting. I think it's a... a an old retro vintage G.I. Joe. I'm not totally schooled on G.I. Joe, but it looks uh, looks like a G.I. Joe. So I, I pulled up Google Lens and, uh, and, and tried that out. And I found out that uh, indeed 1987 G.I. Joe, and this name was Sea Slug, which is really strange. Bad job by the parents naming that kid. And it only sells for about 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, so not a huge score, but I only paid a dollar for all of them. Then I find this Fisher Price, 1978, sold for, or they're selling for 15 bucks, which I think is just way too high. Uh, but I didn't want to assume because I, I do often assume and, you know, make my, make an ass of myself as they say, but I found that even the gas can sells for about 20 bucks. Uh, then I find that 36 to 45 bucks overall, if you have all the accessories, I didn't think I did, but then the closer I looked, I see that the flag and the gas tank and everybody, the dude is in there. So I can sell this for about 45 bucks. And I actually think uh, selling this at 40, 45 bucks, even buying it for 15, I'm going to make my money back and double it. So I'm going to spend 15 to at least make 15. And that's a kind of a cardinal rule. Whatever I spend, I want to double my money. Then on the way out, I find some shoes. These are half off, as that fancy sign said out front. The Minnetonka, super clean shoes, furry, warm, very clean. And on the bottom, we have a lot of tread. You can see the exact model sells for about 30 bucks. Selling seven bucks at the thrift store, so I'm only paying 350. So this is a win-win. These are going home. Thanks for joining me at the thrift store. See you next time. I've really been, I've really enjoyed selling on eBay. Um, as reselling online means reselling in general has changed my life, but especially eBay, I credit with uh, really letting, uh, allowing my business to, to flourish and to fill my fancy pockets with, with cash. So anyway, uh, See you guys on the wild.